thanks for clicking on the video guys this is my four seasons camper it's a defender 110 had the vehicle for about two and a half years been adding bits and pieces so I wanted to show you exactly what I've done and why this vehicle can go in pretty much any condition in the UK and pretty much anywhere to camp which makes it a, an ideal vehicle it's certainly very ideal for me I've owned a few vehicles over the years and I think this is my my favorite it's my favorite camper and it's amazing the bits and pieces you can put on a Land Rover Defender to make it into a really useful camper it's not a huge vehicle so you can pretty much go country lanes park up in towns you can get to most places where a lot of big campers or vans can't get to it doesn't really look like a, a camper so it's quite stealthy if you like to park in places where you're just doing a quick overnighter and you and you want to move on and you you don't want the inconvenience of someone you know telling you, you can't camp there so it's great for for wild camping spots. The beauty of the Land Rover, it's got great ground clearance as well, so you can get to them places that a lot of vehicles won't allow you to go. The beauty of this vehicle as well, you don't tend to spend too much time inside. I love the, the outdoors, so you know, you're, you're kind of forced into the outside and you've got the convenience and luxuries on board but on a smaller scale. So on the passenger side I've got a 20 litre front runner water container. I find this really practical when you're outside and you want to gain water. You've just got a tap on there. I upgraded the tap and put a, an easy operational tap on there. But there's something nice when you're camping about having running water. So it's easy to, to take off, you just unclip it, take it off, fill it up and then put it back on. So that's, that's 20 litres outside the vehicle. I find it really practical, you know, washing up and brushing your teeth and bits and pieces. So that's a, an awesome add-on to the side. So beyond that, I fitted a shower. I think it's ideal when you're on the road for a long period of time and you want to wash. So this is perfect. You just turn up or you're on a campsite or you're somewhere remote and you want to shower outside. There's nothing nicer than, than washing outside. It's a lovely feeling. So this one's made by Direct 4x4. So easy to deploy. A few pegs there. So how easy is that? And I have a pumpable shower that I just pump and boil some water up and mount the shower head to the top. So this is ideal not only for a shower but as a privacy screen if you want to get changed or you've been down the beach and you want to have a quick wash off, it's, it's perfect. Or you want to use it as a toilet if you're in a busy place and we kind of positioned it this side it's got a zip here and i can gain access into the vehicle for your clothes or your smellies you've got little pockets for your bits and pieces if you never had an outside shower it's a great experience especially when you're hot and sticky or you haven't washed for a few days you've been on the road and that enables you to to stay out for a for a longer period and be refreshed on your travels the thing what's great about this vehicle, like I said earlier, you've got great ground clearance and also you've got some great tyres on here. I've got the BF Goodridge All Terrain, they're quite a capable tyre. I don't do really hard off-roading, I do kind of soft off-roading if I want to get somewhere that's not, that's not too bad. What with the ground clearance and these tyres you know you're pretty much sorted 
So I really rate these tyres, no rumble on the road, lovely and smooth and you know they've got the capability if you do get stuck or you do go somewhere that's a bit slippy or a bit muddy you've got a good all round tyre. But I've used these in the snow, plenty of grip. They're a great looking tyre as well, not too knobbly, so very quiet on the road and I've had great wear from them done a few miles in the vehicle so far and they've hardly uh, hardly worn. Another thing I like about Land Rovers is you can climb all over them. So I can gain access to my front runner roof rack up here, putting bits and pieces. I fit in a CB aerial as well up here, which I'll show you that lives inside. So it's perfect if you you want to mount something on your roof rack you can just climb up the front and gain access so I've got a small section on the front there for storage I can put my jerry can up there or bags or whatever so it's perfect up there so these are my latest add-on these aux beam as the dark nights are coming in and you're traveling at night perfect so a great range great spot on them. I've done a review on these on my channel if you want to have a closer look at them in more in depth fitting and and using them at night so they're, they're a must because I've got the standard Land Rover headlights which aren't amazing but now I've added these it's perfect perfect for turning up on a campsite and a camping ground or camp area and you and you want to light the way see where you, you're going to pitch and down dark roads small country lanes perfect or you know if you're off-road so they they were a must so another essential tool for your four seasons camper is a shovel it's got so many applications I've mounted it to the front of the of the Land Rover. It's easy to get at. Tend to use it because I do a lot of wild camping. So you dig in a hole and you're making your own toilet pit, but very practical piece of kit. If you get stuck, you can dig your way out, building fire pits. It's just endless things. So that, that was a, a must to put on this vehicle and I like the way it sits here at the front. These are a new addition as well. These are my Rhino tracks. I was looking at Max tracks and then I was speaking to a friend the other week on a camp out and he suggested get some Rhino tracks. They're quite cheap and reasonable and they're great for levelling up the Land Rover. You can just drive on them. You know, if you're in an uneven piece of ground, you can just level yourself up with them. So that's mainly the reason I've got them. I normally get pieces of wood or rocks to put under the wheels. So they're gonna be awesome. And the main benefit, what they're designed for, is if you get stuck. So, peace of mind. I've got them on the back, mounted to my rear ladder so this is my spare gas it's on a front runner mount and it's propane gas which is good for for all seasons it won't freeze which is a, a great benefit of having propane so i can leave it outside all the time so this is my spare one i've got another 3.9 inside so i'm never going to be short of gas that's perfect I've also put locks on both my mounts, my gas and my water. Another essential piece of kit is the Trasheroo bag. So I keep all my wet bits and pieces, my tarp and everything in here. A few fire lighters and obviously rubbish. But that's a great, great big bag. And that just mounts to the rear the rear tyre 
there's nothing worse than having all your smelly garbage inside the vehicle. With the trasheroo and my rear tyre, I wanted to take the stress off the back door. So we fitted a ORE swing away wheel carrier. So that just gets that weight off that back door. So if you're thinking of adding weight to your back door, definitely think about a swing arm or a separate tyre mount. At the bottom, I mount my Mockins cargo carrier. So we're on extended trips. So I've increased my load capacity. So that's a really practical piece of kit. And it's only one pin to remove the cargo carrier from the vehicle. So it's easy to put on and take off. So this is one of the reasons I call this a four season camper. Is that rooftop tent. It's absolutely amazing. I've had it quite a while now. If the weather conditions are bad, it takes seconds to put up. It's double skinned. So once you're in there and you zip it up, it's so warm. So that's great for any weather condition. Great for the summer as well, because it stays nice and cool. And winter, with that double skin and, and the thick canvas, it's incredible. So you can go in any condition really pretty much in there. I've, I've slept in some cold temperatures and I, I've never been cold. As you can see it's so quick and easy. Only takes the footprint of the vehicle so you can park in car parks or tight spaces and you like I said you're only utilizing the footprint of the vehicle with the last tent extended off the back so you increase your footprint area. So that's another reason I chose this tent. You're just keeping it nice and compact. But like I said, double skinned, easy to put up, totally waterproof, warm, insulated, comfortable mattress, good vision from three sides, great in the wind. You know, you don't get all that rattling and movement. It's rock solid tent. But if you like your winter camping, that's definitely the tent to go for. And another great thing, you've got extra storage up here as well. So you can put a few bits, you can leave all your bedding inside. I've got the ladder up here and a few bits and pieces. Such quality canvas and twin skinned and insulated all up the back and all on the floor under the mattress that's all insulated and great big windows for looking out so you've got three ways to gain entrance and exit in this tent which is another great feature but what a warm tent you can throw in a hot water bottle in here as well or you can get the little buddy heaters up here and you could go down to some serious low temperatures. So within a couple of minutes you've got some fabulous sleeping quarters up there. Also fitted two external solar lights to the top of the rooftop tent. It gives us a great bit of lighting in the dark evenings and totally rechargeable with the sun. Perfect when we've got the awning out if we want an extra bit of light when you approach the vehicle. So they're on a sensor, so as soon as you walk past, you've got that instant light. So one of the things I was toying with, with the Land Rovers, whether to get a split charge system, I decided to go down the power pack route. And so I got the power pack and incorporated that with a solar panel. So it gives us 100 watts of sun energy. Just keeps us self supported, keeps the power pack topped up. That kind of serves as two purposes as well. It charges my battery and it keeps the sun out of that front cab. So it's very practical. So it's a great system. The lead's built into the into a bag around the back. And I'll feed this through that window and then into my Jackery power pack. And the beauty of this over the split charge system is you can take your power your portable power and you can be 
somewhere else. You don't have to be restricted to your vehicle to have your power source. So that was one of the main reasons I wanted a system like this and the ease of practicality of charging and portability. And then this plugs straight into my unit. So that's charging there perfectly. We position the Jackery 500 in this centre console because it was really practical for charging all our appliances while we're on the road. So I have two forms of power going in, I have two leads, I have the one from the cigarette lighter when the engine is going, that plugs into the Jackery and then when we're in a location when the engine's not running, out comes the solar panel and into the Jackery. I've had the portable power in here for about six months and never bought it in, so the engine is giving me enough power and I'm drawing off it all the time what with all my electrical gadgets. In the cab I fitted a CB unit so it's a Midland, it's a portable unit so that's perfect for, for on the road if you've got no communication so it's an ideal piece of kit. I've gone for a 25 litre call box from Petromax this lives in the Land Rover pretty much all the time and the beauty of this is I can bring it out of the vehicle not like a compressor fridge where it's pretty much mounted inside and you're restricted with space it's 25 litres as well it becomes a comfortable seat so that was my choice for this vehicle for keeping all our frozen and groceries cold during our trips so the thing I also like is the padded seat comes off and then you've got a tabletop for all your food prep. I also carry an awning and the awning comes out and all my gear can live under the awning and outside of the vehicle. So it gives you a nice waterproof area to sit and cook. We've had food frozen in here for up to six days. So as the food defrosts, we use it as and when. This is my secondary power pack for longer trips or cold spells when you want a bit more power. This is a larger inverter in here so I can run more electrical appliances such as my coffee machine. So that's a great addition to the winter powered by this Delta EcoFlow 1800 watt inverter. Now let's make ourselves a coffee. A nice bit of coffee on the road or in cold conditions, can't beat it. So a great frothy coffee on the road, you don't have to stop off at shops or petrol garages enjoy a nice fresh coffee courtesy here uh, Four Seasons camper. Regarding water in the vehicle I've got the 20 litres outside on that front runner can. Inside I take a Ridge Monkey 15 litres and I have two other 5 litre water containers and the beauty of these Ridge Monkey containers you, they've got a tap on them as well so accessing the vehicle, I put a step on the back because these vehicles are quite high up. So it's really easy access. So inside the vehicle, we've incorporated a sofa which doubles up as a bed. So we can mix and match. We can come down here and sleep if the weather's really bad because I tend to put a blow up bed on the floor. So we've got two areas to sleep in. I can sleep in here or up the top. This is a lovely place to come and sit out of the elements. We've part insulated the inside of this vehicle so it stays really warm in the colder months. So regards heat for them colder months, we 
we fitted a mud cubby box in the centre console and inside that we've incorporated a 5 kilowatt diesel heater and this thing has been a game changer for us this has enabled us to camp in cold conditions and wet conditions enabling us to dry out our clothes heat our clothes up in the morning or just want to take the chill off in here the unit comes with a remote control so you can be away from your vehicle and if you're coming back to your vehicle when you're cold you can just press the on it takes about 10 minutes to heat this vehicle up because it's so small so with a diesel heater on in this confined space with the curtains shut which we've installed so we've got curtains all round on all the windows it's just a toasty environment to be in in cold conditions so you can imagine being outside having your cook up and then coming in here at, on the evening and you've let the diesel heater run for 10-15 minutes and oh it's so inviting so the opposite side of the sofa bedding area we put a worktop in here with a cupboard inside the cupboard we have all our pots and pans for cooking our bits and pieces soups and bits in here second drawer we've got bowls and plates and then on the top just got conveniences like kitchen roll on the bottom shelf here we've got wash bowl we've got all our tins in there and another two five litre bottles of water and then in this drawer just condiments and sauces we try to utilize as much of the space as possible above that we've got a pull out drawer with a cutlery we've got a Kadak two burner stove that's all electronic ignition if the weather's bad we can get in here hunker down and put the stove on do a hot soup or a little bit of a fry up and make a brew so I've drilled a hole in the base of the floor and I feed my gas pipe from the bottle that's outside my propane bottle through there and I've incorporated a quick release clasp on there and that just clips into my two burner stove so in these two bags we have all our electrical appliances spare leads in this bag we've got um, cable ties and all our outside bungees and bits and pieces in there the beauty of this small space is everything is to hand you don't have to walk anywhere or stretch anywhere so I love the convenience of, of the Land Rover and being able to be in here out the elements is a game changer as well because we used to have this set up differently we used to have a cage and have all the gear in the back so we was always outside and never out the elements so now we can dive in here and we're lovely and warm and also if you want to do a bit of a stealth camp you know you can both dive in here or me on my own and you can just camp anywhere and no one knows you're in the vehicle especially when all the curtains are drawn because no light emits from the vehicle so perfect setup now if you've got a Land Rover this this is definitely the way to go get yourself a bed or a sofa in here and a bit of a worktop we made all this ourselves and it's just perfect a great place to put your head torches is on the headrest of your seats easy to get to it's nice having a torch easy accessible especially in these darker months so for lighting within the vehicle we have all manner of other torches that we use and they all charge off our power packs I have a couple of two-way radios it's great keeping in contact with each other if there's no phone signal it's a must for your vehicle or you're doing a bit of off-roading and they're doing a bit of guidance they're out the vehicle they're perfect for that and then my fishing rod telescopic fishing rod so I love me fishing as well if I can get to a lake or 
a stream near the door. We've got our hats and our grab bag that's got all our essentials in. I won't get all this out, but this has got all the bits and pieces that we can cope quite well away from the vehicle. If a vehicle was to get damaged or there was a fire, we can grab this quickly and we can get away from the vehicle knowing that we can still be comfortable as such. So it's definitely a, a good thing to have in your vehicle, a grab bag. We have our first aid kit. That's quite an extensive kit there that we've collected over the years. So that lives in that corner, easy to get to. We know where it is. So that's a must for your, for your vehicle. So while we're in this corner, I'll just pull the bed out. And down the side of the bed, I've got my fire extinguisher. I've got a few tools for processing wood, because I love I love me fires. So I've got an, a small forest axe, a boreal 21 bow saw, a machete, and I've got a water purification system, catadine, and that's great. You know, if you're out of water and you want to get water from another source, great purification system. It's all there, the whole kit's in that bag. So under the bed, we've got a couple of pull-out cages. We mix and match these, depending on, on what we're doing. These tend to live in here all the time. When we go on trips, we'll probably load this up with food and bits and pieces. So on the rear of the door, I discussed earlier the ORE wheel carrier. This is adding more weight to the door as well, so peace of mind. So hanging on the back, it's got a knife we can get to for bits and pieces. Um, we kind of loaded this out with essentials that we can just grab. Fire lighting kit in that one. Got a little mini saw. It's good for processing smaller pieces of wood. Bits and pieces for my gold panning kit. And in this one, a pair of pruners and a few torches. I have a Garmin navigation in the front, portable one, and I also carry a compass as well. You know, you might want to park with the east facing the vehicle in the morning, you might want a bit of morning sun, or you might want to face west and see the sunset, or you might have a weather forecast telling you what wind direction, and you, you want to face the vehicle into the wind. This is a great addition, a bit of luxury during the cold, wet nights. We whack the telly on and it sits lovely over on that back door. So we can sit on the bed and watch a movie. So no excuses for a little vehicle. A little telly like that can uh, pass away the hours when you're hunkered down inside your vehicle with the diesel heater going and the curtains pulled. So I try to design the vehicle to be comfortable and on the same token, kind of an adventure vehicle. So you've got all your like toys within the vehicle. You know, your car, your wood processing stuff, your carving kit, your fishing rods. You know, what with the boat as well. So you've got all manner of boys' toys to play with within your vehicle, as well as being luxurious inside and comfortable. So that was, that was the main aim when designing this Land Rover, was to be comfortable but, but practical and functional in, in what we like doing. So under here, inside the vehicle, this is all my outdoor cooking kit. And I'm an avid cook outside, I love cooking outside. So this is my Petromax. Atago, which comes with us on every trip. It's a portable fire pit contained in its own bag. So I use this fire pit on all my camping trips. It's just been phenomenal. 
So the final door to the landy. I've got a couple of seats, a set of binoculars. I've got some waterproof trousers, a pair of wellies, a couple of hot water bottles that we've just put in because the weather's turning colder. And under the front and passenger seats, I keep my air compressor and all my tools in case you get a problem with a vehicle. So that's pretty much a great look round this Four Seasons camper. Hope you've enjoyed the tour of the vehicle. Hope you found it interesting. If you want to check any of these products out or camp outs, go over to my YouTube. If you want to check out the products, go over to my website and check that out. I've got detailed reviews on all the individual products that I'm using. So thanks for watching guys. Enjoy the great outdoors and happy camping and I'll see you on the next one.